Hey guys, Cast72 here. Hope everyone's doing well. So today guys, I want to go over a couple of more things I want to upgrade on the uh, Schwinn Hybrid 700C circuit bike that my son gave. Um, first and foremost, I went ahead and got brand new tires for it. Uh, these are going to be by Panaracer. Panaracer, I'm sorry. These are Tour Tires 700 by 32C. Um, I went ahead and got some bike pedals because I went, um, the bike pedals are made um by ipsx i went ahead and got a crank uh a crank set also uh those are made by i hope i pronounce it right it's called vielta uh they're mountain bike um cranks um i'll put the links in the description to all these parts uh in the video down below i'm also going to go ahead and upgrade from your typical bearing uh um bottom uh a cassette housing to uh, actual VP components. These are more of a performance bicycle part. These are made by VP and we're gonna go ahead and upgrade that as well. Um, and then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade the um, the chain as well for, uh, to KMC X8. Um, that chain, in case you guys are wondering, is about one and a half by three thirty twos of an inch. And then of course, I'll probably have to trim it to match the pre-existing chain that I've got. But that's what we're gonna go over today, guys. I think this will be the last of the upgrades. Um, after this, I'll just do some videos on my bike rides. Um, if there any, is anything else I decide to put on the bike, I'll let you guys know. But I am trying to keep it as light as possible. By the way, unfortunately, these are, uh, this is a steel crank set. Um, I was hoping I can get a, I, I don't know, it might, I think the, the, the cranks themselves are aluminum, but I think the uh, the actual sprocket itself is steel. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I, I wanted to get aluminum to make it as light as possible, but what I'm gonna end up doing is taking uh, all these off anyway, or these two anyway, and I'm gonna leave it with this sprocket here. The only difference is that um, I'm going from a 40, I believe that's a 48, a tooth sprocket to a 44 so this is slightly smaller um but uh yeah i i'm i think we'll be good with these um like i said one of the other mods i did was i took this from be from being a uh, three spoke crank set to a single and i'm gonna do the same with this uh unlike that one where i had to drill out the the rivets here they're actually screws so i'm just gonna go ahead and uh, take these off and who knows, because these are actually screw type, I can probably upgrade in the future, um, you know, to something else. But for now, we're gonna go with a 44th tooth compared to a 48. And then of course, uh, we're gonna replace these guys right here. Um, so yeah, let me show you what these look uh, like, by the way. Now these are aluminum, extremely light. Like I said, they're made by IPSXP. Uh, I'll put the link in the descriptions like I mentioned and then we're going with the um, cassette bottom bracket already uh, pre uh, what is it pre-installed I don't have to worry about you know um, lubing the bearings anymore with this old style uh, these are already pre-lubed and sealed and that's what we're going to replace it with so um, all right guys I hope you enjoyed the video I think this will finalize the upgrades for this bike. I think after this point, it'll be about pretty much the way I want it and was hoping to get it as far as upgrades are concerned. So also too, I wanted to mention with these uh, tires uh, made by Panaracers, I, I love the fact that they have this glow, um, this glow band for night riding. Not that I'll be doing any night riding, but in the event, they have a nice reflective uh, a lining on the tire i think that's pretty cool and then of course if you want to guys look at these real quick you're going from this type of a thread on the new ones as opposed to these already on the pre-existing these just look like they're going to grip a little bit better so all right guys let's go ahead and get this video started hope you enjoy
Okay guys, so there you have it. That's the, uh, that's the replacement of the tire. I had just bought the tubes, so I'm not replacing the tubes and I have a new one for the rear because unfortunately I got a flat on this one. So uh, we'll be doing that. But uh, yeah, I like the way they look. I just gotta air it up now. I'm gonna run them at 80, uh, 80 PSI. I really like the way they look, especially with that nice white reflective um, marking. And of course it gives you the brand right there in this tire size. So no need to waste more time, guys. I'm obviously gonna do the same thing on the rear tire. And I think next we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, crank, uh, crank set. All right. So guys, before we get started on replacing the crank set um, to this newer one, uh, again, that's a 48 tooth. This is a 44 tooth, so it's slightly smaller in diameter. Um, and then of course, I'm gonna take these uh, uh, lower and mid-size sprockets off, so we're only gonna stay with the uh, single. But what I wanted to mention is uh, this tool is very handy to have, because uh, that's the only way you're gonna take off these uh, crank sets. Uh, this is by Park Tools, and it's the CCP-22 tool. And uh, we need this in order to take these off, otherwise it's pretty difficult. So, all right, let's go ahead and continue. Another thing I'd like to mention, guys, is that um, in case you're wondering, I'm keeping all these extra parts as spares in case I should need them. Like, for instance, the two tires that I took off, the old tires, those are still kind of good. They still got quite a little bit of thread on them. I'll be saving this whole set right here. Uh, you never know, you know, you might need these in the future, so why get rid of them? Also, I want to mention that when you reinstall these um, cranks uh, and the crank set, always bear in mind that uh, one will always be in the opposite from the other. So if this is down, this has to be up. If this was down, this has to be up and vice versa because without that, it, it'll not counterbalance and you won't be able to continue pedaling. It'll, it'll stall on you um, towards the center. Um, again, this is not for people that are very familiar with cycling. These are basically for new beginners such as myself, just some tidbits. So, okay. Um, another thing, guys, uh, I want to mention is that I'm going to zoom in here on this for you because uh, I'll explain why in a minute. I don't have the actual tool that's needed to take this uh, crank, uh, um, I'm sorry, bottom bracket crank set um, bearing assembly off. And uh, so I'm going to compromise uh, with a flathead screwdriver. And unfortunately, I wanted to use my mallet, but all I have is this hammer, so I'm going to have to slightly tap it. I, I, I couldn't find my mallet hammer. Anyway, this is an alternative. Now, this will only work if you've maintained the bike and you've lubed the bearings frequently, because obviously this will come off very smoothly. If you have an older bike where water's gotten in and it's kind of rusted out, I highly don't recommend using this uh, method because uh, you're, you're probably going to end up cracking or breaking um, the assembly here and you're gonna have a harder time getting it off. So I could have used a monkey wrench uh, Again, I don't know where mine's at. So I'm gonna compromise. So um, All right, here we go I think that's tightening it. I'm sorry. So you see how easy it was with just a few taps. But then again, guys, keep in mind, I keep mine well lubricated so the threads never seized inside the housing. Uh, so again, this is only a method for that purpose. If uh, again, if it's rusted out, don't even bother. Uh, you're gonna need the tools. So anyway, let me get on. Gonna, as you can see, it's already loose. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side going, as you can see. 
I'm gonna get the other side off and then we can install the new VP, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the VP, sorry about that, cassette bottom bracket. Okay guys, once you've cleaned the inner housing and you're ready to put your uh, sealed uh, bearing assembly, your bottom bracket, just bear in mind that the right will go to the uh, left hand side and the left will go to the right hand side, uh, just so you're aware. So basically it'll kind of go in like this and then this will go on the opposite side. But before I do that, I want to mention you want to lube the bearings. I mean, I'm sorry, you want to lube the threads just with a little bit of lube. And the reason for that is because you don't want it to seize on you over time. Uh, should water, dirt, and grime get in there, you want to be able to have it uh, lubricated so the next time you need to take it off or change it out for whatever reason, it'll be as easy as it was as you saw uh, us do it a little while ago. It was just uh, it wasn't hard at all. A few taps and it came on. You want to do both sides. You don't want to overdo it, guys. You just want to just make sure it has enough to keep the threads nice and moist. Um, I was going to mention something else before I forget. Oh, you're going to need to keep the old the older locking nut because it doesn't come with it in this in this VP package uh, you're gonna need to keep this because that's what's gonna lock the other side in so let's go ahead and get this uh, installed and uh, yeah let's keep going Okay guys, moving right along. That part of it's done now. We've installed the new sealed bottom bracket bearing assembly. And as you can see, spins very nice and smooth. I locked both sides. And now we're ready to start on the crank set. Now, on the crank set, like I said, we're gonna get rid of uh, these two, the low and mid. We're gonna keep the high. So that's pretty simple. We're just gonna unloosen these um, LN wrench and screw L wrench screws. Um, got the tool right here. And then we're gonna keep all the old stuff, like I said, or put it in a box or something. And then we'll mount the uh, the pedals. Uh, and then lastly, we'll replace the chain. And then uh, we're pretty much done. So let me go ahead and get this part going. And uh, yeah, we'll keep on moving. Okay guys, there you have it. So now you just have the single. And uh, now we're ready to go ahead and install this onto the bike along with the pedals and then uh, the chain and we're going, we're going good right now. All right. Hey guys, I just had to really stop and tell you there's a huge significant difference in how smooth this spins. I mean, it's like buttery smooth compared to the uh, old style wheel bearing type. Um, I'm very happy I decided to go with a BB cartridge set. In case you guys are wondering, uh, this is a BB cartridge set 1.37 by 24T and it's at 68 by 127.5 millimeter. Again, I'll put the parts in the description, but there's a huge difference. It's almost like day and night. Look how smooth that is. 
compared to before if i were to spin it as hard as i could with the old style bearings i might get about five or six spins out of it and then it would stop where here it's just like he keeps on going i just had to share that with y'all that's a huge significant difference can't wait to ride this thing all right guys uh next we're gonna go ahead and put the pedals on replace the chain by the way i like the color of this chain it's silver so i think that's going to stand out real nice as opposed to the uh, dark colored one i got so yeah let's uh let's keep moving on very light as you can see it's marked left and then right so yeah nice okay guys and then for the chain as you can see i've got the new one on top the old one on the bottom basically you just want to measure them exactly the same and then if you look at this end, you can see where we're going to have to trim it, which is pretty much going to be uh, these two uh, rivets will have to come out. And then you put your, your link, which is inside this package right there. You got the, the left and the right, and then that'll lock the chain up. And now you got your new chain to measure the exact same length as the original. So that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, pretty much this will sum up the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I, uh, like I said, these are all the mods that I was going to do to this bike. I finally got them completed. From this point on, it's probably just going to be me riding the bike on videos, uh, places I go, scenery, stuff like that. But I, um, I hope you enjoyed this whole little um, adventure I took with upgrading this bike. And it didn't cost a whole lot. If you add up everything, when I put the parts list below, um, you'll see what the grand total was. Um, I walked into a bike shop one time and uh, they had a bike that uh, sold, I think the cheapest bike they had there was like for $1,000. Uh, I got this bike, if I would have bought it, I got it from my son, but had I bought it, it was worth $349, 350 bucks retail at a big uh, box store like Walmart and Target. And now, I mean, with the upgrades, it's it's a smooth bike and it does everything I want to. Um, I, it handles really well. It's extremely light. I mean, what more can you ask for? I do have some Shimano shifters, guys, that I mentioned on a previous video that I changed, uh, that I, I'm not gonna change out because I couldn't wait for them to come in. They came from China. It took like two weeks to get them, almost three. So I went with these generic ones. They're holding up really well. I don't have a problem with them at all. I did a video on that if you guys want to search. Um, aside from that, I'll end with a couple of photos of the bike all installed and all the parts on, and then uh, go take a nice bike ride and enjoy my new uh, modded uh, Schwinn 700C circuit hybrid bike. All right, guys, I appreciate you and your time. Stay safe. God bless. Peace out.